Hello friends, good morning and welcome back. This is CA Devan Kothari here and uh, we were learning your subject of costing at CA intermediate level. Last session we had started with the topic about cost sheet and uh, I gave you a format of cost sheet. We also did one question of cost sheet. Also by the end of the session I asked you to try two questions, two questions from the book regarding cost sheet. Both those questions we will discuss right now. Before that a short recap of what we did in that last session. Well, yesterday we learned the format of the cost sheet. Cost sheet format was something like this. Now, <clears throat> reminding you, what was the purpose of making this full format? Well, the purpose of making this entire format was to ultimately reach this value that is cost of sales. The purpose was to ultimately reach this value that is cost of sales, meaning cost of the units that I have sold. So you need to find cost of only those goods that you have sold because profit is earned only out of the units that you sell. Yeah. Now for that matter, we started with the three basic components of cost that is direct material, direct labor, direct expenses. And you remember total of all direct cost was called as prime cost on that you add factory overheads, meaning the overheads the indirect costs that are incurred inside the factory. Overheads means indirect costs, factory overheads means indirect cost incurred inside the factory premises. Add that, that gives you the factory cost. On that, we did add opening WIP less closing WIP. What was WIP? WIP means unfinished goods, incomplete units. Yes, and closing WIP means the units which remained incomplete at the end of the year units which remained incomplete at the end of the year and why did I deduct that closing WIP well because ultimately you saw that we want to reach the cost of the units that I have sold now these units are incomplete units remember if these are incomplete units where are these units located well these units are still inside the machine and if these are still inside the machine then definitely these units are not sold not sold so I will remove those incomplete units when will these units be sold it will be sold in the next year so in the next year it will be added in the format of next year under the name opening WIP add yes so add opening WIP less closing WIP gives me again factory cost notice the name this was named as factory cost and after WIP adjustment this is also named as same factory cost why the same name well because there is no new cost which was included there it is just the adjustment of units that I have done so this FC first FC was the total factory cost incurred in my factory but after WIP adjustment the FC that I get will be FC of completed units meaning this is the factory cost of only the completed units because incomplete units you removed now question one did not have any WIP so same 8 lakhs comes over here but question two you will find some WIP I'll show you that adjustment <clears throat> plus admin overheads will give you cost of production now admin overheads I told you can be of two types admin overheads can be related to production units or it could be admin overheads which is general now which admin overheads will I write after completed units well this is the admin overheads which is incurred on all the completed units all the production units that is the admin which I write over here while other admins which are not incurred only on the production units can be considered as general admin and that general admin is written over here after I get the sold units. So COGS indicates the goods that are sold and general admin is incurred only on that sold units. General admin will be incurred only on that sold units. So it will be written later over here. Anyways, coming back here, admin overheads related to production, I add that gives me my total cost of production. Cost of production indicates my total cost of producing these units. Like in yesterday's question, this 10,40,000 was the total cost of producing. 
how many units was total cost of producing 16,000 units on that cost of production add opening FG less closing FG gives you the cost of the goods sold again same reason why do I deduct closing FG what is closing FG well closing FG are the units that remained unsold at the end of my current year these are the units which remained unsold at the end of the year now if these units were not sold so I remove these units because I want only the units that are sold I want only the goods that are sold so unsold units I remove and accordingly even the cost of unsold units I have to remove but the main calculation we learned in the cost sheet format was to determine this cost of unsold units that is valuation of closing FG we learned that valuation by two methods P4 method and weighted average method what does the FIFO method say first in first out remember I gave you the logic behind that I don't want you to just memorize the method I want you to understand the logic behind the method first in first out means that the units which are produced first will be sold out first so in this example here I have COP which are the units manufactured in current year while opening FG indicates the units that were manufactured when opening FG indicates that 800 units were manufactured in the previous year so if I have units manufactured in current year as well as units manufactured in the previous year as per FIFO method which units will be sold out first well as per FIFO method these previous year units are sold first if that previous year units have already gone for sale then which units remained unsold over here must be out of the current year so this was my logic behind FIFO method that if opening units are sold out first then what remains unsold as closing FG should be the units of current year so closing FG is units of current year now because closing FG 400 are units of current year hence I do the valuation of that 400 by cross multiply based on the values of the current year now what was the total cost of current year total cost of current year was this 10 lakh 40 thousand but that 1040 was for total 16 thousand units of current year so total 1040 is the cost of current year total 16 thousand are the units of current year based on that I find a valuation of these 400 units all you had to do was cross multiply done yes this was your valuation as per the FIFO method but we also learnt weighted average method in that let me remind you that also regarding weighted average method I started with some example remember I gave you example regarding your fuel tank in your vehicle and I said that in case of FIFO method old units are sold first but in case of weighted average method is it the same logic no in case of weighted average method when I sell goods when the goods are sold do I sell previous units old units first no do I sell current year units first no rather in case of weighted average method the logic was that the units which I sold are which units well it is sold out of mixture of previous year and current year it is sold out of the mixture of old units and new units here in my example old units are opening FG new units are the current year production so the mixture of them both is this total now whatever units are sold are sold out of this mixture and therefore what remains unsold will also be unsold out of that same mixture so if the unsold units 400 are out of that same mixture then this time my cross multiplication will not be based on the value of this 16,000 rather my cross multiplication will be based on this 16,800 is the units of mixture having a cost of 11,8,400 then 400 out of that mixture will have how much value we did that on the right side over here we did that over here that 16800 has the value of 1108400 
16800 is the mixture then unsold units also valued at the rate of mixture 400 units should have what value it gave you it gave you 26390 that became your valuation as per weighted average method and then remaining things under weighted average method was the same logic that i did not ask you to complete only thing i wanted you to know valuation as per weighted average method ultimately out of that yesterday's explanation the main thing you have to remember the main thing you need to remember was that the logic behind weighted average method that weighted average method means valuation is done based on mixture mixture of what mixture of current year plus opening mixture of current year plus opening done yes okay okay then after that valuation after that valuation we also then further completed the cost sheet after that valuation of closing fg here you got the cost of goods sold which indicates the cost of the units that i have sold look this 16400 are the units of goods sold while 1082400 is the cost of the goods that i have sold please understand 1082400 is itself not sales it is cost of the units that i have sold yeah on that i will add admin overheads general if any selling overheads selling and distribution overheads i add that gives me my final cost of sales remember selling and distribution overheads is incurred only on the sold units selling overheads yes it is incurred only on the sold units so this 5 per unit is incurred on these 16400 units gives you 82000 here that gives me total cost of sales on that then i add profit and make the sales this was my question number 1 now in this question three important workings that i had reminded you number 1 was this reverse calculation to find the production units i hope that you must have understood number 2 was this valuation of closing fg that i did here by fifo method weighted average method we already revised that and number 3 was this profit calculation here that profit was given as 1/6 of sales now the profit was given based on sales sales was missing so what to do if profit is given based on sales and the sales is missing i told you assume that missing as 100 and go reverse this is my cost cross multiply will give you the actual sales then done in fact regarding this calculation which i did for profit i also gave you one extra example to practice all possible calculations like that yes to practice all different possible profit calculations i gave four examples here i gave these examples because these four examples cover all types of possibilities how profit information might be given profit information will be given out of these four methods only yeah anyways in all these four methods the ultimate conclusion that i draw was that if profit is based on something and that something is missing then assume that missing as 100 once again i'll say the statement again if profit is based on something and that something is missing then assume that missing as 100 this was the simple logic here and accordingly we did those four examples note number 2 i gave to tell you that the materials that you show in the cost sheet has to be the direct material consumed not the purchase if the question gives you purchase then from purchase you need to find a consumption like this purchase plus purchase expenses add opening material less closing material less scrap from materials will give you consumption why do i add purchase expenses or which purchase expenses will i add well i give you one more logic over here and i also made you write a note about that look these notes that i have made you write are certain basic core concepts in costing i'm making you write down these notes because it is my experience that people keep on forgetting these basic principles hence i am giving you them in writing so look at the books you had written a note for this note number 2 that what when i purchase material when the company purchases material then along with the material whatever cost is incurred on the material any cost incurred on that material until that material reaches my factory gate 
any cost incurred on the material until the material reaches my factory gate will be considered as material cost. It will be added in the material cost as purchase expenses like this. So this purchase expense will include any cost incurred on the material until that material reaches my factory gate. Done. That was my material consumption. And then I give you notes regarding FIFO method, weighted average method. In case of FIFO method, conclusion is that closing FG, closing stock is valued at the rate of current year, while weighted average method, ultimate conclusion is that closing stock is valued at the rate of mixture. Done? Yes? Okay. Now, based on that, you were supposed to try question number two and question number three. Well, question two, I'll discuss that over here. I've already made the format. If you have not, you can start making the format. I will put down values from question two in my format and certain things in question two, you could have got the answer, but there were certain workings in question two that were new that I will help you out. Yes. So as of now, I'll just put down figures while reading the question. Question number two. <clears throat> This was your question number two that uh, from the following information it says prepare a cost sheet prepare simple cost sheet you were told you were given inventory of raw material WIP finished goods opening as well as closing notice for raw material opening closing rupee values are given yes for WIP opening closing rupee values are given but for finished goods opening units and rupees are given yes you can find rupee value while for closing finished goods Notice in case of closing finished goods here, in case of closing finished goods, rupee value is not given. Why not given? Well, because you have to find that closing finished goods rupee value. You will find that by FIFO method or weighted average method. Well, in this question, I did not mention method. Plus, I did not even tell you that you try by which method. Well, let me show you workings by both the methods. Yes, there also I have some logic to explain to you. Further, point number B, it says purchase of raw material is 1,90,000. So you are given purchase, not consumption. What you are given is purchase. You'll have to find consumption out of that. The so purchase of raw material is given 1,90,000. Carriage on purchase will become your purchase expenses. It is given 1,500 and a sale of scrap for raw material is given 5000. So as per my format, what I will do there is that for question number two, you know, for question two, I need some working note, but you know, I'll not make a separate working note. Rather, notice, I'll just show the working over here. Remember your working note too. You start from purchase, which is given 190,000. On that, you will add purchase expenses like carriage inwards. Carriage is given 1500. And then on that, add opening raw material, less closing raw material. Add opening raw material, 29500 given. Less closing raw material given, 36000. And less scrap value from material given. 5000 so let us work out 190000 plus 1500 plus 29500 minus 36000 minus 5000 gives you 180000 as your net raw material cost i'll put that here in my rupees column look you don't need a separate working note for that this method of calculation will be more than enough this working will be enough for that further in the question you had wages given 297000 that wages will be taken as the direct labor but notice in this question there is no direct expenses given if no direct expense given then take that as zero so labor is given 297000 
and direct expense is zero. So 180 plus 297 gives you 477,000. As your prime cost now on that prime cost we will have to add the factory overheads factory overheads you are told that it is absorbed at 60% of direct labor cost the so factory overheads 60% of labor so labor was 297 60% 178 200 becomes your factory overheads add that gives you 655 200 as your total factory cost then add opening WIP less closing WIP opening WIP given is 31,200 less closing WIP given is 38,400 you can please keep calculating in your book if you had not done the homework so on this I will have 31,200 plus minus 38,400 minus gives 6,48,000 as my factory cost of completed units. Further, <clears throat> you are given admin overheads at rupees 12 per unit produced. So notice again my admin overheads is also per unit produced. If admin overheads is given per unit produced, meaning this admin overheads is also admin overheads related to production. It is not a general admin, rather it is admin related to production. So yes, this admin will come over here. I'll just write down the rate that they have given. It is 12 per unit produced. admin overheads is at the rate of rupees 12 per unit produced but again in this question just like the previous question do I know the number of units produced so far right now do I have the production units no well so it is 12 per unit into dash units produced so far, I do not know the production units. So, TK, I'll keep that pending. I'll just go further. Further, what all details we are given? Let's see. Selling and distribution overheads, you are given 20% of the selling price. Again, selling overheads is given as a percentage of selling price. We don't know the selling price yet, but I'll just write down the rate over here. Selling overheads is given at the rate. Look, it says 20% of the selling price. Well, 20% of selling price would mean 20% of the sales. Yes. So selling overheads is yes, 20% of sales you are given. And finally, you are given sales is 7,600 units at a profit of 10% on selling price. So profit is also given. Profit is given 10% of the selling price, meaning 10% of sales. That is 10% of sales. <clears throat> now, if profit is 10% of sales, selling price means it is 10% of the sales. Also, you were given units sold is 7,600. Now, 7,600 is the sold units given. Can I use that units over here? No, because for admin overheads, what I need here is production units. Remember, admin overheads about production admin overheads of production has to be incurred on all production units not on the sold units yes now in my format here if i write units you remember i was writing units in the inner column here i will write units in the inner column for reference purpose but in that units column the units given in the question 7600 where should I mention that units well 7600 question says that these are sales units sales units meaning it starts from here they go sales units means the goods sold 7600 are the units of the goods sold so if 7600 are my goods sold units I write that 7600 over here 
Now, 7,600 are my units of goods sold. Plus, if you see in the question, you are also given opening finished good units and closing FG units you are given. Opening FG rate is also given. We'll use that all here. Chalo. Opening FG units you are given as 200 units. Closing FG units you have is 1600 units and you remember as per the format closing FG is supposed to be minus so 1600 units also as per format I show that as negative and opening FG rate is given at the rate 84 now the question is same like last time that again my production units are missing but you remember same like last time if production units are missing what will you do well you can find production units from the sold units that you have all you had to do was reverse working reverse working just like the previous question remember 7600 is the sold units 1600 is my unsold units closing fg means unsold units so if 7600 is sold units 1600 is unsold units so total how many units i must have got total i should have total i was having 7600 plus 1600 total i was having 9200 units out of which 1600 is unsold so that 7600 is sold yes remember when you do reverse working then negative values are added yes so 7600 sold units i start reverse working so negative value is added gives 9200 positive value is deducted so it should give me production over here as 9000 I get as my production 9000 is my production units now if 9000 is the production units then that same 9000 <coughs> just a minute then that same 9000 I need to mention over here yes if 9000 is my production units that same 9000 I had to mention over here <sighs> so now that I know production units is 9000 so I can now find my admin over it's 9000 into 12 gives me 1 lakh 8000 as my total admin over it's add that with 6 lakh 48000 should give me 7,56,000 as the cost of production. Yes, look so far in this question, there was absolutely nothing new as compared to question one. It is exactly same as question one. Even this reverse working is exactly same as what we did in question one. I hope you understand that now. Reverse working is basic mathematics here. Yeah. Okay, so I have my cost of production now as 7,56,000 which is the cost of 9,000 production units. Remember these 9,000 units of production, these 9,000 units are my units of current year while 200 units opening FG are my units of previous year. 9,000 are my units of current year, 200 opening FG are my units of previous year and opening FG 200 units rate of valuation is already given so 200 into 84 16,800 becomes my opening FG so 16,800 plus 756,000 gives 772,800 And then from that minus closing FG. Now closing FG valuation we need to still find. Remember what we learnt yesterday in my last session. Closing FG valuation that I need to do. It will be done by either FIFO method or weighted average method. Chalo. Right now let me show you that if I follow FIFO method. Look in this question they have not mentioned which method do they want. You can assume any method and do the working. I will just explain both the methods just for your clarity. If I follow FIFO method, 
means what fifo method i told you means that opening fg units are sold out first so what remains unsold are the units out of current year so what remains unsold are the units out of current year and if these unsold closing fg is out of the current year so the valuation of these unsold units will be done based on valuation of current year now current year valuation you see that over here that 9000 units is costing 756000 then 1600 should be costing how much cross multiply 9000 units is 756000 then 1600 should be what so i'll take 756000 divide by 9000 it gives me the rate into 1600 units of closing 134 400 1 lakh 34,400 becomes my closing FG valuation here. This is my valuation as per FIFO method. I hope that is clear. Yes. Okay. Now, just for your understanding, just for practice, what if, just example, what if I had asked you to solve by weighted average method? Well, as per weighted average method, what was the logic? As per weighted average method, my closing FG should be valued at the rate of what? Closing will be valued based on the rate of mixture. Mixture means mixture of current year plus previous year. Mixture of current year plus opening. Now current year is these 9000 units here. Opening or previous year are these 200 units. So mixture would be this total over here. This 9200 is indicating my mixture and the total cost of that mixture is 770 to 800 now if total mixture 9200 is costing 770 to 800 then 1600 should be costing what cross multiply over here i repeat 9200 is 770 to 800 then 1600 should be what well if you calculate that chalo, let us try 770 to 800 divided by 9200 into 1600 well if you do that cross multiply in a weighted average method also you are getting same answer 134 400 well not necessary this happens every time question one this did not happen but here tk whether fifo method or whether weighted average method it is still giving you the same answer yes it is possible can you tell me why is this happening why is both methods giving same answer think about the logic here well here both methods yes they are giving same answer why because look my opening fg is valued at the rate of 84 and in fact even my current year production is valued at what rate check that my current year cost is 756000 current year units are 9000 if you divide that 756000 divided by 9000 well, that is also giving you same rate, rate of 84. So logically, if my current year units are at the rate of 84, opening units are also at the rate of 84, then definitely mixture will also be definitely at the rate of 84. If current year is at the rate of 84, opening is at the rate of 84, then the mixture of current year plus opening will not have a different rate will have to be at the same rate rate of 84 hence fifo method and weighted average method both are giving the same answer 134 400 done yes so here in this question they have not mentioned which method they need you to follow you can take an assumption but in this question you don't even need an assumption because no matter which method you follow it is still giving the same answer yeah anyway so going further now cogs 770 to 800 is my total minus 134 400 gives me cogs as 6 lakhs 38400 now 638400 becomes my cost of goods sold this cogs is my answer which i expect you all should have got if you have tried this question at home then most of you should have got answer till here 638 400 in fact 
let me tell you this also if you did not get this answer 638 400 then there is some serious issue with you either you didn't even give it a try i told you last time heavily that i need you to try the questions that i give you need to do a lots of hard work here so either you have not even given it a try or if you didn't get this answer then you have not read the question clearly or maybe you are very weak in mathematics basic mathematics will be definitely needed in my costing subject so those of you who are thinking that commerce field does not need mathematics well it will definitely need mathematics just basic mathematics i don't need you to learn the advanced mathematics like differentiation integration trigonometry and all but at least basic level mathematics you should definitely know yes so anyways you get the 638 400 as the cogs further there are some new things that i need to tell you Deco. further in this question there is no general admin given so you can skip that but selling overheads is given as 20 percent of sales profit is given 10 percent of sales now selling overheads is given if 20 percent of sales you don't know the sales yet profit is given 10 percent of sales you don't know the sales yet so what should i do what can i do remember maybe in your childhood yes anything before ipcc level is your childhood for my sessions i will consider whatever you did before your ipcc level before your intermediate level everything is your childhood maybe it is school or maybe it is your college or maybe it is your cpt level well in your childhood you might have learned methods that 20 percent of sales means some other percentage of cost you have learned the methods of converting percentage of sales into percentage of cost but i told you in my last session that i don't want you to follow that percentage conversion method rather i give you another method called assumption method in yesterday's example any method you follow you could get the same answer but trust me in this example here that percentage conversion method will not work it is not possible it will not work like this 20 percent of sales you cannot convert into percentage of cost no option you have to follow the assumption method that i gave so what was my method notice this here in this case my profit is given as a percentage of sales if the profit is given based on sales and the sales is missing profit given based on sales sales is missing so i give you method that if profit is based on sales but the sales is missing then you assume sales as 100 now if you assume sales as 100 profit 10 percent of sales so 10 percent of 100 10 becomes the profit now 100 sales 10 profit so cost of sales should be 90 you go reverse here and you get that cost of sales should be 90 now if cost of sales has to be 90 but do you have the value of that 90 here no for that 90 also you don't have the rupee value what to do well simple what to do is you just go till reverse all i need you to do is i need you to go still reverse over here you need to go still reverse over here that yes cost of sales is 90 but before that you have your selling and distribution overheads as per the question selling overheads is 20 percent of the sales now 20 percent of sales so again selling overheads is given based on sales sales is missing you already assumed that as 100 now if you have assumed sales as 100 then 20 percent of sales means 20 percent of 100 please do not take 20 percent of 90 90 is not sales 90 is cost of sales so if selling overheads is 20 percent of the sales meaning 20 percent of 100 so my selling overheads therefore becomes 20 and now if you go reverse 90 is the cost of sales 20 is the selling overheads go reverse so 70 should be the cogs 90 is my total cost which includes selling overheads if 90 is my total cost of sales which includes 20 as a selling overheads if the total cost 90 includes 20 as selling overheads so my cost before selling overheads would have been 70 
and if cost before selling overheads was a 70 then cross multiply now 70 is 638 400 then 100 should be what 70 is 638 400 then 100 should be what cross multiply let's try that 638 400 divided by 70 into 100 gives you 9 lakh 12 thousand 9 lakh 12 thousand becomes your final answer here 9 lakh 12 thousand becomes your final value of sales over here so those of you who already had this answer 9 lakh 12 thousand very good from my side yes it was pretty good i can clap for you but uh, those of you who could not i hope you understand my working over here this was also actually not new this is the reason I gave you note number one yesterday where I gave you four examples where I gave you four examples of how to calculate profit when the profit is based on something and that something is missing. Same logic I applied over here that profit is based on sales, sales is missing, selling overheads is also based on sales and the sales is missing. Assume that missing as 100. Assumed the sales as 100. So profit becomes 10 selling over it becomes 20 go reverse my cost before selling over it should become 70 and cost before selling over it means the cost of goods sold is now 70 and if the cogs is 70 which is 638 400 then 100 should be what that gives you sales 9 lakh 12 thousand done yes well if you got this answer 9 lakh 12 thousand by any other method it is not a problem then it is also correct by any method you get i don't mind some of you might have tried making equation some of you might have got 9 lakh 12 thousand by drafting an equation yes that is perfectly fine and no problem with that but if you don't have that answer then you follow my method over here this was the same method for which i gave you examples yesterday done yes i hope that is clear this is my question number two yes i'll give you a moment you can copy down the question if you have still anything pending I'll show you from the beginning again. <clears throat> yes, we'll scroll.
yes done we'll go on okay then we'll go on with question number three then question three also i had asked you to try homework let's see if your answer matches with what we discuss now <clears throat> we'll read that from here first question three the books of others manufacturing company present the following data for the month of april we are given direct labor cost is 17,500. Direct labor is rupees 17,500 being 175% of works overhead. What is works overhead? You remember works overhead means factory overheads. But what does this sentence mean? This sentence says that direct labor is rupees 17,500 being 175% of works overhead. Look, for the costing subject, it is not just enough that you know the formats and you know the calculations. In fact, for most of questions, especially like these questions, what is more important is not your knowledge of costing. But for questions like this, what is more important is your knowledge about the language. English language. 80% of the questions will be solved easily if you clearly understand the question properly so what is more important is not the calculation part what is more important is to understand the question better i will keep telling you this repeatedly many times so reading the question correctly is almost half the work done read this correctly what does this say it says direct labor cost is rupees 17500 being 175 percent of works over it first of all works over it means factory over it so does this mean does this mean that my factory overheads is 175% of labor? Does this mean that factory overheads is 175% of labor? Well, no. It does not mean that. Rather, it means reverse. It means that labor is 175% of factory overheads. Notice, say for question 3, again I have a format ready. <clears throat> I'll put in that format. In this question, they have given labor, direct labor cost, they say is 17,500. So, direct labor is already given 17,500. And they say that this 17,500 is 175% of factory overheads. So, labor is 175% of factory overheads. Now, if 175% of factory overheads is 17,500, if 175% of factory overheads is equal to 17,500, then factory overheads will be equal to what? Simple equation, if 175% of FOH is 17,500, then FOH will be equal to 17,500 divided by 175%. Yes, naturally, because if FOH into 175%, if FOH into 175% is 17,500, then FOH will be 17,500 divided by 175%. Yes, 17,500 divided by 175% should give you 10,000 as the FOH. Yes, this is my only new thing, you know, one of the new thing in the question. So, you need to understand language of the question clearly. I'll show that language once again. Deko. The direct labor cost is 17,500. It is already given. And they say that this 17,500 is 175% of the factory overheads. Meaning DL, meaning labor is 175% of FOH. Meaning labor. I'll just write that here. Therefore, direct labor is FOH into 175%. Now, if labor is FOH into 175%, if DL equals to FOH into 175%, therefore, FOH will be equal to DL divided by 175%. Simple mathematics there. Done? Yeah. Further, the cost of goods sold excluding admin expenses were 56,000. Cost of goods sold, COGS. 
well cogs generally in all my previous two questions cogs is what you calculate now this question you notice that cogs is already given how much is it given 56000 now cogs is already given so i put that in my workings here <coughs> COGS, this is my question 3 working and in this working, your cost of goods sold is already given. I put that against COGS here, it's already given as 56,000 is the COGS already given. Further, <coughs> COGS already given 56,000. Further, Inventory account showed the following opening and closing balances. So this time notice you are already given opening and closing stock of April for raw material, WIP and finished goods. Notice this time even finished goods you are given in rupee values. If the FG stock is already given in rupee values, meaning you don't need to worry about any valuation. You are already given all the valuations. Just put the stocks as it is in the cost sheet format. So raw material stock WIP stock and FG stock everything will be put as it is wherever needed other data are as follows other data you are given selling expenses matlab SND over its and you are given general and admin expense that is AOH general is given 2500 sales you are given as 75,000 rupees so what are you supposed to find in this question look this is a kind of reverse question so far in the question all the details given but you notice raw material consumption raw material purchase not given we learnt in the previous question that if raw material opening and closing is given then you can find material consumption but for that matter also you need at least material purchase here in this question even purchase of material is not given in fact read the required part they are asking you to calculate the purchase of material the purchase is not given rather purchase is what you are asked to calculate we'll do that here Achha. one more thing to notice Deko. the cogs that they gave over here it said it is cost of goods sold the wording say that this is cost of goods sold excluding admin expenses why that words why have they given these words excluding admin expense well because now you see here that admin expense is a general admin now if the admin expense if the admin over it is a general admin over it then as per my format you remember that if the admin over it is a general admin then general admin then general admin will anyways come after cogs so cogs does not include that admin over it because admin comes after the cogs so when the question said that the cogs excluding admin is 56000 if the question says that cogs 56000 is excluding admin over it well that clearly indicates that admin overheads is not admin overheads based on production rather it means admin overheads is general admin overheads done yes okay so i'll just put down those values over here so whatever things we have in the question i'll just put them down you are given stocks of raw material well raw material stock does not appear in my cost sheet format here okay i'll keep that pending but you are given wip stock i'll put that here WIP opening is given 10,500. WIP closing is given 14,500. Even finished goods stock you are given. FG opening is given 17,600. Opening FG given. 17,600 and closing FG is given 19,000 and you are given selling expenses general admin and all I'll put them here selling overheads are given 3,500 
admin overheads general is given 2500 and sales for the month is given as 75000 sales is also given so well if you notice this you are already given the cogs on that plus admin plus snd will give you cost of sales so let us do that 56000 plus 2500 plus 3500 gives you 62000 directly as cost of sales and 75000 is given as the sales difference 13000 becomes your profit so i could easily complete the cost sheet you could easily complete the cost sheet because the cogs is already given but that is not what the question is mainly asking what the question is mainly asking you first part of the question they are asking you to find material purchase so think about it now what is needed to be done over here well you have these data in the cost sheet but what they have asked you to find is materials and yes you notice here in my format here that materials is still missing in the question now if material is missing can i take that zero no because you have to find material but direct expenses is missing will i take that zero yes direct expense not given take that as zero but material is what you need to find how will you find material well simple now that you have the cogs all you have to do is you start from this cogs here 56000 and starting from this cogs you need to do reverse working until you find material starting from this cogs you need to go reverse until you find materials let's do that cogs you are given as 56000 on that cogs now when i do reverse working remember in case of reverse working negative values are added positive values are deducted now as per the as per the straight working forward working closing fg was supposed to be minus so that is a negative value closing wip was supposed to be minus that is a negative value so in reverse working negative values will be added positive values will be deducted that is exactly what we will do so i'll start with that from 56000 cogs 19000 negative i will add 25000 and 17600 i will deduct minus 17600 gives me 57400 that becomes my cop there is no admin overheads of production so same becomes my factory cost of completed units on that 57400 plus 14500 negative value you add minus 10500 positive value you deduct gives you 61400 as the factory cost minus 10000 is your factory overheads and minus 17500 is your labor gives you 33900 as your direct material now will i say this 33900 is the answer to the question they asked no this 33900 is not the answer final answer because this 33900 is what this 33900 is direct material consumption what they have asked you to find is direct material purchase so from consumption how do i find purchase well i'll go to my working note I'll go to my working node to find a consumption out of purchase and there also I will do reverse working. Notice my working node here. I gave you these notes as the notes in question number one. I'll make the same format here. Dekho. And if I start from direct material purchase on that. Add opening raw material less closing raw material should give me direct material consumption this was the format i gave you last time
but now this time in my format here here also i will do reverse working because i have consumption i want to find a purchase 33900 that you got is the consumption from there i go reverse to find the purchase so closing raw material is given as 10600 which is a negative value and opening raw material given 8000 is a positive value but when i do reverse working here negative values are added so 33900 plus 10600 minus 8000 gives me 36500 This 36500 becomes my final answer for direct material purchase. Purchase is what they asked you to find. Purchase is 36500. Done? Yes. As such, no new concept in this question. Only thing was a practice for the reverse working. Yes. Instead of doing this working note like this in reverse working, you could have shown that working as forward working also. You start from consumption. Add closing raw material, less opening raw material will give you purchase. Done? Yes, this is your question number three. Anyways, I'll give you a moment. Please do copy that if you have not yet solved the question. Yes, we'll scroll.
Yes, we'll scroll. <clears throat> Do you remember whenever there is reverse working involved, then first you make the format as it is and then for reverse working you will do the sign change negative values are added positive values are deducted please don't forget that that is a simple rule of mathematics reverse working will be needed at many places in our calculations these were just a few examples of that Okay, we'll go on. <clears throat> yes, please. That was question number three. Now, before going towards question number four, before going to question number four, I have some more notes to make you write down. So, write down some notes. Yesterday, in the previous session, you had written two notes, uh, I think four notes. One was for profit calculation examples. Other was for the material consumption then for fee for method and weighted average method so let me call this as your note number five <clears throat> note number five i will write down you can just copy admin overheads production is incurred <coughs> on all completed units admin overheads production is incurred on all completed units while AOH general is considered on all sales units. <coughs> AOH is never incurred on incomplete units. Underline the word never, never incurred on incomplete units.
therefore it will always come after removing closing wip Okay, listen up. For admin overheads, I gave you these two notes here. First one says that admin overheads production is incurred on all completed units. I already explained that in the format. While admin overheads general is considered on all sold units. Yes, that also I explained in my previous session. But now I give you one more concept here saying that because of these two points, I now say that admin overheads is never incurred on incomplete units where are the incomplete units located incomplete units are located inside the factory inside the machine and machine is inside the factory so incomplete units are inside the factory now as long as these are inside the factory whatever costs incurred on them will fall under factory overheads not admin overheads so for the incomplete units whatever overheads you incur well overheads might be incurred on incomplete units but any overheads incurred on them will be still considered as a factory overheads because these units are located inside the factory yes but for uh, completed units once the units are completed then only then it comes out from the factory and after it comes out from the factory only then i might incur the other admin overheads on them yes so after completion whatever overheads i incur on them might be admin or might be selling overheads but admin overheads will never be incurred on incomplete units well that is why that is the reason that admin overheads will always come after removing closing wip you see in your format of cost sheet you see in your format of cost sheet here that admin overheads I had written here after removing closing WIP. Notice every overhead that I have written here has a particular position and a reason why it appears in that position. A reason. For example, factory overheads comes over here because it is incurred inside the factory, inside the factory cost. Factory overheads comes over there because it is incurred. Factory overheads comes here because it is inside the factory, inside the factory cost. Yeah. Admin over selling overheads comes at the last because it is incurred only on the sold units. So only after removing unsold units, closing FG, only after that I put the selling overheads. Well, similarly, admin overheads might come over here or admin overheads might come over here admin overheads of production is incurred on all completed units while admin overheads general is incurred on all sold units so admin overheads might be incurred on sold units or admin overheads might be incurred on completed units but admin overheads is never incurred on incomplete units hence admin overheads might come over here after sold units admin overheads might come over here after completed units but admin overheads will never come over here before removing the completed units admin overheads will never come before the completed units yes this is basically how admin overheads are supposed to be treated done yes okay okay 
Now, one more set of notes I need you to write down is like this, note number six. I'll write, you just copy first, then I'll discuss, yes? Okay, we'll discuss. Now, the following items of cost, yes, are to be excluded from my entire subject of costing. Yes, these costs are excluded from the entire subject of costing, from every chapter in costing. Why? Because these costs are financial cost. Now, my costing subject considers only operating the cost. Operating cost means the costs which are incurred on for day-to-day -day routine operations for routine business activities operating costs are the costs which are incurred for production and sales operating means for production and sales so let me clarify that consider only operating a cost that is for production and sales so Costing considers only the operating costs which are incurred for production and sales purpose. Any other cost like interest cost, like income tax, like goodwill return off, cash discount, etc. are considered as financial costs. They are not considered in my subject of costing. Rather, they will be considered in your subject of FM, financial management. Yes, at your IPCC level, you have another subject called financial management. These costs will be considered in your subject of financial management. Let me also clarify with one example like this. Um, <clears throat> say in costing, I start from sales, less all items of cost. Well, that less all items of cost that I do, I called that as cost of sales. Now sales minus cost of sales gives me profit. This is my costing subject. Now this profit which I get here, this profit, well, which profit is this? What kind of profit is this? Well, you might have named 
you might have used various names for profit in your accounting subject in your finance in your financial accounts or even in your financial management fm subject at both these places this profit here is named this profit here is named as ebit or sometimes say pbit that is profit before interest and taxes yes this profit here is the profit before interest before tax before interest so from this profit now from this profit now what the companies will do is from this profit now they will deduct interest that will give them earnings before tax ebt and then they will deduct the tax will give them eat earnings after tax and then from that earnings after tax you then pay dividends equity dividend preference dividend etc etc and then you will get the retained earnings and all well this part this part of calculation falls under financial management so let me differentiate like this this part here from sales minus cost of sales up to profit is your subject of cost and management accounting for your ca inter level and this part here after ebit whatever you do that happens in your subject of financial management so notice this interest cost this interest cost income tax that comes in the subject of fm so that will not come in the subject of costing if interest is deducted later in the later after reaching ebit so for reaching up to ebit here you do not consider the interest cost yes so interest cost income tax look my words are very clear i am writing here income tax i am not talking about all types of taxes look in a country like india we have like hundreds of different types of taxes all taxes i am not telling you to avoid i'm telling you to exclude only income tax in the costing subject rest of the taxes may be say property tax or professional tax or any such other routine municipal tax that you have to pay will come sorry may come in my subject of costing but income tax will definitely not come in this subject yeah so interest you don't consider income tax you don't consider goodwill return off well why not consider because look technically goodwill return off is not even an expense it is not even an expense it is just an apportionment it is just a book entry it is actually not an expense that you pay goodwill is not an actual expense that you pay out of your pocket that you incur from your money it is just a book entry hence goodwill return off goodwill will also be not considered in costing and cash discount well here i have some more details think about it cash discount first of all let me tell you different types of discounts later in my materials chapter later in materials chapter i will clarify that there can be there can be three different types of discounts listen to this clearly i will need this again in materials chapter there can be three different types of discounts number 1 quantity discount number 2 trade discount and number 3 cash discount quantity discount is the discount that i am giving because you purchase in bulk the quantity discount is given to the customer who makes bulk purchases yes second trade discount trade discount is the discount that is given by routine trade practices meaning trade discount is not given just for purchasing bulk quantity rather trade discount is given to everyone even if he does not purchase bulk quantity trade discount will be given to every customer it is a routine trade practices like for example you might have heard like uh, at many places when uh, in many shopping centers and all say especially for garments shopping and all when the discount festival comes then almost every uh, shopping center every uh, most of the shops are giving discounts flat discounts to everyone flat 10% off flat 20% off amazon flipkart also during their festival seasons they give flat 10% off flat 20% off you use say hdfc credit card you get flat 10% off use sbi credit card you get flat 15% off so is that discount given only when you make a bulk purchase no that discount is given to everyone 
yes no matter what purchase you make it is a flat rate of discount given to everyone that is called as trade discount and the third one here what i consider here is cash discount now what is cash discount why is it given notice the reason why these discounts were given quantity discount i give you in order to encourage that you buy in bulk quantity trade discount i give you just because it is a routine trade practice it is just to general generally promote sales but cash discount is not given to promote sales in fact cash discount is not even given at the time of sale what is cash discount cash discount is given to promote early payment from the debtors say i sell a product to you i sell this product to you telling you that you will have two months credit period to make your payment two months credit period but if i want early payment from you i will offer you a cash discount that yes normally your credit period is two months but if you pay me if you pay the money within the next 10 days then i will give you 10 percent extra discount i'll give you 10 percent extra discount if you make the payment within the next 10 days well then this nature of discount is called as cash discount so look at the nature am i giving this discount am i giving this discount to encourage the sale no i'm giving this discount to encourage early payment from you so if this discount is given for just getting the money collected fast it is not given for the purpose of promoting sales now if it is not given for promoting sales meaning this discount is not for promoting the sales it is not operating a cost it becomes my financial cost yes so cash discount is just given to get my finances faster it is not given to encourage more sales it is given just to get the money collected fast in fact this cash discount was not even known at the time of sale think about it at the time of sale do i know that the customer will pay on time or not do i know that the customer will pay within 10 days or after two months no so at the time of sale i do not know whether i will be giving cash discount or not so while deciding selling price I will not consider the cash discount while deciding selling price i will consider only quantity discount or trade discount if i know that for bulk quantity i will be giving discount then for bulk buyers i will accordingly decide the selling price if i know that for routine buyers i will be giving trade discount then i will be deciding selling price accordingly but i don't know whether cash discount will be given or not so that i cannot consider while deciding my selling price that i will not consider while doing my entire subject of costing yes so in my entire subject of costing these are only few examples few examples of things that i exclude from the subject of costing later in different different questions wherever some more examples will appear that is when i will remind you that we had done this topic here done yes this is one of the important uh, conclusions <clears throat> general conclusion for my entire subject of costing please copy down the note heading is items to be excluded from costing
We'll scroll. If you're done writing, then look at question number four. <clears throat> okay now based on that last question we try now the last uh, based on that last uh, note we now try the last question that is question number four now notice this question has certain different things in this question what they have asked is instead of giving factory overheads admin overheads selling overheads directly what they have given is examples so this is the one where we learn that which example of cost falls under which type of overheads so instead of giving directly the total factory overheads they have given various examples of cost you decide that which example falls under factory overheads which example falls under admin and which falls under selling overheads that is how we will be solving question number four yes so for this question four what i will do is i will not fully solve the question right now here rather i will ask you to try i will show you the solution though but <clears throat> i will first discuss through this entire question and for every item of cost over here i will tell you we will discuss that which item falls under which nature of cost which item of which example of cost given here falls under which cost under the cost sheet yes once i clarify that then i will leave this on the screen here i need you to make a cost sheet can try that yes we'll try chalo <clears throat> so question four they say from the following particulars prepare a cost sheet that we will do so look at the different items given there <clears throat> raw material 33,000 you will put that as your direct material naturally productive wages well productive wages means the wages which are used in production which are directly involved in producing the product directly involved meaning that becomes your direct labor DL direct expenses is direct expense itself directly unproductive wages well unproductive means the wages which are indirect which are not directly related to production so unproductive wages will become indirect labor now you know that indirect costs you know that all items of indirect cost means overheads so yes this unproductive wages indirect labor means overheads which overheads should i consider that to be factory overheads admin overheads or selling overheads well if nothing is clarified then consider that indirect cost is incurred in the factory this is a general assumption that i give you for the entire subject that wherever you have some indirect cost but you don't know that it is incurred where factory admin or selling then assume it is incurred in the factory you classify this under factory overheads classify that under factory overheads <clears throat> then factory rent and taxes goes under factory overheads I'll just put F for that factory lighting also factory overheads factory heating 
goes under factory overheads motive power like power consumption power consumption also happens in the factory haulage haulage is basically the cost of moving the goods from one place to another place within the factory yes that is also within the factory it is the cost of moving the goods within the factory inside the factory so that also goes under factory overheads then director fees now look director is not always general admin because a director might be responsible for a variety of things say for example i have two directors in my company one director handles all the factory operations and another director second director handles all the general admin work then the director who handles factory operations his fees will fall under factory overheads and the director who handles routine admin work his director fees will fall under admin overheads yes so director fees works works meaning factory director fees office office meaning admin factory cleaning yes goes under factory acha and this admin when i say it will go under general admin when you don't know anything it will always go under general admin <clears throat> sundry office expense again goes under general admin factory estimating is factory factory stationery is factory office stationery goes under admin <clears throat> loose tools return off tools are used where tools are used in the factory look just because it is using the word return off does not mean you exclude it i gave you the note and i was specific in the note saying that what is excluded goodwill return off is excluded anywhere you see the word return off please don't exclude that use your brains only goodwill return off will be excluded all types of return off is not excluded tools return off because tools are used in the factory that falls under factory overheads then factory insurance also yes factory overheads office insurance goes into admin legal expenses also goes into general admin rent of warehouse now what is warehouse used for warehouse is used to keep the finished goods that are sold because after i get an order from the customer then the goods are removed from the factory and sent to the warehouse from the warehouse it will be dispatched to the different uh, uh, branches of your retail stores or it will be dispatched to the customer yes so warehouse is the place where sold goods are stored hence rent of warehouse will fall under selling and distribution overheads it is basically a distribution cost yeah so warehouse goes under selling and distribution overheads depreciation depreciation of plant machinery becomes factory overheads because plant machinery are used in the factory depreciation of office building goes admin overheads and delivery van goes under selling overheads bad debts now this is new bad debts is something new so i'll come back to it later let me keep that pending for now let us see the other items and i will come back to bad debts later advertising advertising is part of selling and distribution sales department salaries selling distribution upkeep of delivery van delivery van is for distribution bank charges bank charges also important important because most of you keep making a mistake here bank charges what should i do bank charges will i say ignore bank charges Didn't I just give you a note that bank charges are ignored? Well, no. The note that I gave does not say that bank charges are ignored. Rather, it says bank interest is ignored. Bank charges are routine charges, say checkbook issue charges, or say for example transaction charges and all. So bank charges are routine expenses that are incurred towards the banking uh, transactions that you don't have to ignore. These are incurred for routine day-to-day -day operations. the so bank charges are not ignored bank charges are yes considered in costing it will go under general admin work it is not incurred in the factory it is not for selling distribution it is for your routine administrative work commission on sales goes under selling distribution water supply well water supply we don't know that where did they supply water it might be in the factory might be in the office might be in the showroom well if you don't know then general assumption like i said those items of indirect cost which you do not know where is it incurred consider 
or assume it is incurred in the factory water supply i put that in the factory over its rent and taxes of the office office will become admin over its look it is rent and taxes so this word taxes should i ignore no because it doesn't say income tax rent and taxes generally refers to the building rent and the building municipal taxes yes and the last one cash discount i already told you cash discount what to do cash discount you will ignore cash discount is excluded from the costing subject yeah now coming back to bad debts over here listen carefully regarding bad debts there are different opinions there are two different opinions in the costing subject say one opinion says that bad debts is a financial cost so it is ignored second opinion says that bad debts is a selling and distribution cost so it has to be considered in snd overheads well once again there are two separate opinions one opinion says that bad debt is to be ignored other opinion says that bad debt is selling overheads well let me give you justification for both in a way both the opinions are correct i can convince you for both the opinions say so the first opinion which says that bad debts are financial cost ignore it is ignored because bad debts are not known at the time of sale imagine at the time when i am selling this product to you at the time of sale do i know that you will become a bad debt obviously not in fact if i knew that then why would i sell the product to you yes so bad debts are not known at the time of sale so i cannot say that bad debts are incurred in order to promote the sales so under that condition under that time under that kind of thought we say that bad debts are ignored from costing subject it is not incurred for promoting the sales it is not your routine day to day operational expense it becomes your financial cost while second opinion says that at the time of sale yes bad debt can be estimated well i will not estimate bad debt for every single sale that i do but at least can you estimate bad debts for the entire year yes you can in fact you also estimate bad debts in your account subject in your subject of financial accounts don't you estimate bad debts in fact based on your estimated bad debts you you make provision for bad and doubtful debts yes so bad debts yes can be estimated you even estimate that in your accounting subject so under that consideration they say that bad debts should be estimated and should be considered in costing it will be shown under selling and distribution overheads well both the opinions are correct you can follow any opinion but for all my students i need you to follow the opinion which i give you so that we don't have confusions in class just for theory purpose i have explained both the opinions to you you will have that same topic in the costing theory later yes in costing theory you will have this topic regarding bad debts different opinions of bad debt treatment but out of these two different treatments of bad debt i need you to follow the first treatment easiest treatment what is easier easier is ignore easiest treatment for bad debts is to ignore bad debts considering it is a assuming it is a financial cost so bad debts i tell you to ignore bad debts considering it is a financial cost and uh, so it will not be considered even in your selling and distribution overheads done yes now this entire classification that i did i need you to put that in the cost sheet format now i need you to make a cost sheet right now not homework i'll give you 5 minutes time you make a cost sheet and you put this data in the cost sheet format how will you put these items in the cost sheet well direct material direct labor direct expenses you put as it is then all items which you classified as factory overheads all these items which you classified as factory overheads add them up and put the total under factory overheads then all items which we said admin overheads add them up and put them in your cost sheet as admin overheads and the last all those items which i said as selling overheads you add them all and put them in your cost sheet as selling overheads 
can do that yes i have already done the markings you just need to add all items which i said as factory overheads and put them under factory overheads add all items which i said admin put them under admin add all items which i said as selling put them under selling yes and accordingly make a cost sheet try that then i'll show you my solution yes <clears throat> i'll give you a moment please do try that Yes, should I have tried that by now? <clears throat> then this should be your solution. Please do check that. By the end, they are also asking you to convert that total cost into cost per ton. So I just calculate the total cost divided by the tons. You are given in the last line of the question that there are total 10,000 tons. Divide the tons will give you cost per ton also in this example there is no wip stock there is not even any opening and closing finished goods all you had to do was simply add all the items of cost yeah your total of factory overheads check should have got 37050 this is the total of all those items your total of admin overheads should have got as 5550 and total of selling overheads check should have got 4500 
Okay, we'll go on then. <clears throat> okay, now these were all your classwork questions, but still before I wrap off the chapter, I will also show you certain home assignment questions where we have some new things to learn. Look, when I started the chapter, I gave you the course sheet format, but the format of course sheet that I gave you was a very basic level format. Of course, I gave you that format because that is the format which will be used in majority of the questions. But formally, as per your study material, there are some more new things also in the format. There are some additional items also still in the format, which I have not yet explained. I'll explain them in some of the home assignment questions. So notice. Um, <clears throat> In your books, come to the home assignment part. I'll show that here. Question one in home assignment is pretty simple, just like our classwork question one that you need to try. Question two is also a direct, pretty much direct question. Question three, you will have some new things to understand. Question three is also simple, but it is not exactly same as what we did in the classwork. Calculation wise, it will be the same, but you need to read the question better to understand the language. Notice in this question, few things if I tell you. In this question, you are not given direct material, direct labor, direct expenses, factory overheads separately. Rather, what you are given is works cost. Now I told you works overhead means factory overheads. Similarly, works cost means what? Works cost basically means factory cost. What you are already given here is factory cost per unit. Plus in this question, there is no WIP stock given. So this factory cost per unit is itself the factory cost of completed units. So what you are given is factory cost per unit for various different production levels at various different production levels your factory cost per unit is given your capacity is 1 lakh units <clears throat> full capacity is 1 lakh units so if I produce tell me if my capacity is 1 lakh units and if I do production at 30% of the capacity then 30% of the capacity means how many units do I produce well at 30% you will produce 30,000 units. 1 lakh units you will produce when you work at 100% level. Now, if your capacity is to produce 1 lakh units, does it mean that every year you will produce full 1 lakh units? Or you might produce less than that? Why? Say, you might produce less than 1 lakh also. But why should you produce less than 1 lakh when your capacity is 1 lakh? Why would you produce anything less than that? Well, the main reason is maybe because there is no demand. You will not produce to the extent what you can produce. Rather, you will produce to the extent what is the market demand. If the market has demand of 30,000 units only, then why would you produce extra units? You will produce only 30,000. Yes. Otherwise, your production will go waste. Yeah. So, they have given various different production levels and they have given factory cost per unit at each of those levels. Yes. So using that, you can identify the total factory cost. So my total factory cost will be like this. My total factory cost will be 30,000 units into 380 per unit will give you total FC here or 1 lakh units into 310 will give you total FC for 1 lakh units production level. Yeah. Anyways, that was the only new thing here. Rest of the things are already given. You are given 
fixed admin expense 150000 you're given fixed marketing expense as 250000 that becomes your admin overheads general and selling overheads variable distribution cost amounts to rupees 30 per unit variable distribution cost will also be considered in your snd overheads but it is 30 per unit into the number of units whatever you decide yeah it can sell 100% of output at 500 per unit this is the selling price given but look at this line also it can market 30% of its output at 550 per unit so if i keep selling price 500 then 100% output i can sell but of all 1 lakh units i can sell but if i keep selling price of 550 per unit then i can sell only 30% output i can sell only 30000 units naturally your simple law of demand if you charge a higher price then the demand will be lower they have given two different alternatives and they have told you to make a cost sheet at 30% and 100% capacity levels both done yes and plus for 100% capacity level they have given certain additional items of cost also over here all these are for selling that 100% units so all these items of cost will also be put under your selling and distribution overheads Anyways, I need you to try that question. You are given that with solution. Please do compare your workings with the solution there. And in my opinion, you should be able to do that yourself. Yeah. Question four here is like a question four of the classwork that I gave. Because here again, there are lots of examples of cost given. You just need to identify which example falls under which nature of cost sheet. And accordingly put that in the cost sheet which example falls under which category in the cost sheet and accordingly put that in the cost sheet that you will practice i am not discussing question four <clears throat> but question five is similar to that question four again question five is more detailed version of question four question five i will discuss right now <clears throat> Question 5 is just like home assignment question 4 also like classwork question 4 again you are given various examples of cost you need to decide that which cost falls under which category in the cost sheet but chalo, before I give you question 5 I told you this question now is regarding the detailed version of the cost sheet detailed format of the cost sheet so before I give you question 5 let me explain you a detailed format of cost sheet by the end of your chapter you can see in your books i have given you a detailed format of cost sheet it's on page 1.13 i've given you one detailed format of cost sheet this is the full format which covers all possible things that can come in cost sheet yes we'll see that Deco. <clears throat> notice in this detailed format now my first few lines up to this point here are for calculating a direct material consumption I gave you that same in <clears throat> another working note but you might include that within the cost sheet format itself Deco. I start from purchase plus purchase expenses like freight I told you something about that purchase expense do you remember I told you that any cost incurred any cost incurred on the materials until the material reaches my factory gate any cost incurred on the material until that material reaches my factory gate will be considered as your material cost itself will be added to purchase expense itself yes so purchase expense here you can mention here is any cost until material reaches the factory gate any cost until the material reaches my factory gate will be put under purchase expense here minus purchase returns if any goods are returned yes add opening less closing minus scrap value sale of scrap for raw materials will give me direct material consumption all that we have done plus direct labor direct expenses will give me prime cost now what will be included in direct labor what can be included in direct expenses all that also i've explained in some notes i've given some examples there yeah look this format and the notes after this format will help you in questions like home assignment question 5 will help you in questions like a classwork question 4 because here i have given you 
a detailed list of examples that which things fall where in the cost sheet yeah so direct labor direct expenses okay will give me the prime cost then plus factory over it's also called as works over it and what can be included there we'll see that in note number three gives me factory cost also called as works cost add less opening and closing wip gives gives factory cost of completed units now in that i add admin overheads related to production this we did in our format but after that now something's new Deekho. after that now i have add packaging cost now packaging cost isn't that a part of selling and distribution packing material or packing cost yes generally it is a part of selling distribution but here i have classified packing cost into two categories primary packaging and secondary packaging secondary packaging will come yes under selling overheads secondary packaging will be included in selling overheads secondary packaging is included in selling overheads but primary packaging comes separately here why so because look what can be the primary packaging say this pencil when i sell this pencil for distribution purpose i have to put the pencil in boxes and the boxes are then put in those big cartons and all these boxes and cartons and all comes under secondary packaging before that in this pen itself say when this is a new pen i might have put a seal on the pen over here I might have put a seal on the pen over here like even in your ball pens at the tip of the ball pen there is a rubber cap inside there's a lock rubber lock inside well that is a part of primary packaging now how is that different from secondary packaging look secondary packaging like carton boxes are put only when they are sold only when the units are to be sold but primary packaging is put immediately on production so which will be considered as, as primary packaging what is considered as secondary packaging well in your factory the packaging which happens inside the factory itself the packaging which happens on all the production units will become primary packaging and the packaging which happens at the time of dispatch will become secondary packaging i repeat the packaging which happens at the time of production will be called as primary packaging and the packaging which happens at the time of distribution will be called as secondary packaging yes so because primary packaging is at the time of production hence it is added over here it is added on all the completed units secondary packaging is incurred only at the time of distribution the secondary packaging which is incurred at the time of distribution so it is incurred only on the units which are sold now if it is incurred only on the units which are sold hence it is written after the goods sold look at the difference primary packaging is incurred on all completed units secondary packaging is incurred on only the sold units that is where both the things differentiate generally if you are not told anything then you assume that the packaging is secondary packaging put them under selling overheads but if the question specifically mentions that it is primary packaging or it specifically mentioned that packaging is incurred on all production units then you take that over here done yes okay also you have minus scrap value of process loss scrap value of byproducts well these two items i will not explain right now I will explain them in chapter 8 chapter 9 respectively scrap value of process loss you will have in chapter 8 scrap value of byproducts you will have in chapter 9 basically these are the scrap value generated from the production process so at the end of production process you might gain some scrap value because of the production process now if this is the scrap value obtained because of production process because of production hence it is deducted to find the cost of production it is deducted for finding the cost of production yes now that i have cost of production on this cop 
add opening FG, less closing FG, closing FG by fee for only for weighted average method will give you cost of goods sold. Add admin overhead general, selling overheads will give cost of sales plus the profit will give you sales. The sales will be net sales, net matlab gross minus sales return. Yeah, these remaining items here are same as what we did earlier. Done? Yes. <clears throat> So what was new over here? Well, new things in this format were mainly only these two items, primary packaging and the scrap value of the production process. Yes, primary packaging is added immediately on the completed units and scrap value of production process is deducted on the completed units before the cost of production. Done? Yes, please do remember that. Let's also see the notes over here. Note number one says direct labor includes what? Yes, it includes wages and salaries, allowances, incentives, overtimes, etc, etc, TK that you can read. Direct expenses includes what? Well, I had given you an example. Direct expense includes royalty. Also, it might include higher charges paid for hiring some specific equipment. If I hired some specific equipment for doing only this production, then it is directly incurred for this production. It will include cost of products or service specific design or drawing. If I have incurred any designing cost, drawing cost specifically for this product, it becomes directly related to this product or any specific software used for this product will become direct expense of the product. Other expenses which are directly related to the production of goods. Yeah, we'll see examples in question five. Factory overheads, works overhead includes what? It includes consumable stores, depreciation of plant machinery and all, lease rent of the production assets, etc, etc, etc that you can read. Admin overheads related to production includes what? Now this was new. Admin overheads related to production. I told you that certain admin overheads might be incurred on all completed units. I did not give examples. Now I give you examples. Admin overheads incurred on all production units might be say quality control cost. Look, I have a department called as quality control department. What is this department supposed to do? Well, this department will have to check the quality of every product that is made. So will they check the quality of only the sold units or will they check quality of all produced units? Well, naturally, they will check the quality of all units produced at the time when they are produced. At the time when they are produced, quality checking is not done at the time of sale. Quality checking will be done immediately on production. Well, then it falls under admin overheads related to production. However, if the quality checking was done only at the time of sale while dispatching the units, then that will fall under general admin. Can you differentiate that? Yes. So quality checking is generally done for all production units. So I put them over here. Research and development cost. Research and development cost related to production process will be incurred for all the production units any other admin overheads related to production. General admin can have many examples that you can read. Selling and distribution also can have many examples in which secondary packaging is included here. Yeah. Anyways, these were some examples here. Based on this, let me show you a few things in question number five. <clears throat> question five, I'll just discuss which items should fall where. Accordingly, you will then see the solution. Yeah. Okay, so question five. First item you have is raw materials purchased. Well, raw material purchased you will use for finding direct material consumption. Don't take this 10 lakhs itself as direct material. Rather, you have to use this purchase and find consumption out of it. Yeah. Next item, GST paid on that above purchase, 18%. Now, this is new for you. But notice, along with that, they have said that this GST is eligible for input tax credit. Now look, probably by now you might have not still studied the GST subject. But if you have studied, then you should know this. And if not, I'll just give you one line clarification here that if the GST is paid, but it is eligible for tax credit, whenever you see this word, that you can get tax credit of the GST, then this GST is not your cost. It is like you have paid 1,80,000 GST, you have paid 180 lakhs of GST, but because of tax credit, you will anyways get refund of that. 
it is anyways supposed to be obtained back in the form of credit in the form of refund so this gst paid will not become your part of the cost ignore yeah freight inwards where will you show freight inwards inwards meaning it is incurred for bringing the material so freight inwards is incurred for bringing the material it will go under direct material cost Ajah, what if it was freight outwards what will you do if it was freight outwards well freight outwards will be incurred on what think about it freight outwards will be incurred on what well which units or which goods go outwards finished goods when they go outwards when it is sold yes freight outwards will fall under selling and distribution over it freight inwards falls under your material cost falls under your purchase expenses any cost incurred on the purchase until the material reaches my factory comes under the material cost you remember that yeah so accordingly freight inwards falls under your direct material <coughs> wages paid to factory workers factory workers so that goes under direct labor contribution towards pfesi of that workers is also direct labor bonus paid to factory workers is also direct labor i can give you in a shorter way these three items will fall under direct labor then royalty paid for production i said it was direct expenses amount paid for power and fuel power and fuel is also directly incurred to do the production it is directly incurred to make the production but it is neither material nor labor that falls under direct expenses amount paid for purchase and molds and patterns i told you designing cost or patterns and molds cost for the uh, products that you produce will fall under direct expenses yes job charges paid to workers job charges paid to the worker is also falling under direct expenses because look it is not your routine employees look labor direct labor will be those people who are employed in your company this is not salary or wages this is job charges paid to job workers if you are doing production in terms of job work then i don't pay salaries to any employees because i might not have any employees i just pay the job charges that job charges will therefore fall under direct expenses <clears throat> anyways so these items i'll say will fall under direct expenses see on the previous page and job charges on this page falls under direct expenses then stores and spares consumed well stores and spares consumed goes under factory overheads depreciation of factory building is factory overheads office building goes under admin overheads depreciation of plant machinery also goes under factory overheads and depreciation of delivery vehicle goes under selling overheads yes acha this depreciation of office building when i say admin overheads which admin overheads it will be general admin when nothing is mentioned always consider it is general admin yeah salary paid to the supervisor supervisor is working where whom does he supervise he will supervise the factory worker when you don't know anything put that under factory overheads repair maintenance for plant machinery is factory overheads sales office is selling overheads and vehicle used by director goes under general admin insurance for plant machinery is factory overheads factory building is factory overheads and stock of material and wip is also factory overheads why because material stock wip stock is where is located inside the factory yeah expenses paid for quality control check activities quality control i told you falls under admin overheads but which admin admin overheads related to production quality control falls under admin overheads of production salary paid to quality control staff also admin overheads related to production research and development in production process i gave you that notes also falls under admin overheads of production please refer the notes that i have at the end of the chapter for these three things yeah i'll just clarify refer note number 4 on page 11 
please do mention that in your books also <clears throat> that will help you <sighs> further um, expenses paid for pollution control and engineering and maintenance engineering work maintenance work pollution control all that belongs to the factory because pollution is done by the factory expenses paid for administration of factory work administration matlab admin over it but it is admin of factory work now if it is administration of the factory work so it falls under admin but which admin admin related to production because production happens in the factory yeah salary paid to functional managers production control ka manager salary paid to production control manager will become again admin over it's related to production salary paid to finance and accounts manager is general admin admin over its job production this becomes admin over its general and sales marketing goes under selling over its salary paid to general manager will go under admin but general admin <clears throat> then packing cost packing cost primary packaging you had a separate category for that for primary packaging and packaging for redistribution will go under secondary packaging that goes under selling and distribution interest and finance charges paid well interest and finance charges paid now this is important interest and finance charges paid generally i said that bank interest is to be ignored but well the interest that you ignore will be the interest on term loans many times banks many times companies also pay routine interests routine interest on say maybe some rent deposit or you pay interest on say electricity deposits and all you pay interest on the deposits given by the debtors to you and all well routine interests will not be ignored well here you are given interest we don't know which interest is that either you assume that it is interest on term loan so you ignore or you consider that it is routine activities interest if it is activities if it is interest of routine activities i will put that under general admin if it is interest of routine activities yes you put that under general admin both opinions are correct any opinion you follow yeah fees paid to the auditor will fall under general admin fees paid to legal advisors also general admin fees paid to independent directors all that will fall under general admin performance bonus paid to sales staff goes under selling and distribution value of stock as on 1st april that becomes your opening fg <clears throat> value of stock on 1st april okay that are becoming your opening stocks this becomes opening raw material then you have opening wip and you have opening finished goods look opening fg and closing fg fg values are already given so you don't have to do valuation by fee for weighted average values are already given these are all your closing stocks then <clears throat> amount realized by sale of scrap and waste generated during the manufacturing process scrap during manufacturing you see in the format i had a new item for that scrap during the manufacturing process production process related scrap will be deducted before the cop this will be deducted before the cop <coughs> anyways that should help you to solve that question number 5 this was my discussion for question number 5 now you are given solution in the book please do refer that solution do study them this question is an important one because it has many new things there done yes please do practice that question that will be end of my chapter here that will be my end of this session here this is my end of your first chapter course sheet next session will be starting with the next chapter new chapter that is budgets budgetary control yeah done that's all for now thank you very much see you in the next session yeah